Hi guys and thank you so much for tuning in. Today I show you the process of my latest oil painting called Valency. And first of all, this wonderful title isn't by me. This painting is a commission for one of my patrons, a dear collector of mine. And she came up with this wonderful poetic title and had the idea of a girl with blowing hair in front of the sea with a bouquet of flowers and fair bows and a lot of fireflies. A limited edition of 20 fine art prints of Valency is available on my website. A real-time video in which you can see how I painted the hair will be available on my Patreon page soon and you can get access to it by selecting the $10 reward tier. So she came up with this wonderful idea and I really love this idea. I'm always so lucky to get the commissions and the concepts that I absolutely love to paint. And this happened, I believe, because when as an artist you paint only the things you love, you attract those people and those followers that are into this kind of art. So I wouldn't attract people that, for example, like male portraits or landscapes or, I don't know, abstract art. So I wouldn't get those commissions. She came up with this wonderful idea and I wanted to do something special. So I already did some paintings for her and this time I wanted to do something really really outstanding and yeah beyond what I would do normally. So normally I'm choosing some models, making some Frankenstein <laughs> mock-ups in Photoshop and then I have a composition and then I paint it. But for this painting I wanted to come a bit closer to one of my very huge inspirations, John William Waterhouse. His art is oh, I could I'm always coming back to his art so when I am kind of frustrated with my art or I think I don't have any ideas anymore <laughs> or I just I'm unmotivated and I don't want to paint sometimes I'm a bit depressed or sometimes I just feel down and I can't do anything and I don't want to do anything and when I want to motivate myself to paint I look up my inspirations and the best inspiration for me is Waterhouse he is oh, just his art is so incredible and I wanted to dedicate this painting to his style of art and I wanted to inspire this painting by his art and I'm I think I might have succeeded in <laughs> maybe getting 10% close to his masterly craft and I did everything I could so I the photo is a self-portrait my boyfriend had to take pictures of me in the studio garden and we also had a fan next to me so that it should blow my hair what didn't really worked out because the fan was way too weak and it it was supposed to get the dress blowing as well but it only succeeded to blow my hair like a bit and it was like at my head so <laughs> it wasn't that successful and the dress I wear is a dress from my grandma I wanted to have this painting look very classical so I just look the clothing style of Waterhouse's paintings and they all the muses all wear the beautiful lush dresses and sometimes a little like peasant styled dressed and yeah I just went to my grandma and she she just wears those dresses she has a ton of those and yeah I just uh, tried that on and I also bought a bouquet of those flowers and oh my god sunflowers are so perfect in my opinion to catch the atmosphere so for me sunflowers mean um, Van Gogh of course because this is like the most famous painter I I think this was the first painter I ever um, met as a as a young child in um, school when I was a, a small child we had to paint the Van Gogh sunflowers so it's, it's my first memory of art and sunflowers also remind me of the Wizard of Oz so both something classical and traditional and something modern and I just oh, it transfers me into a I don't know into a realm of fantasy and dreams sunflowers are something special so and they are so big I also planted sunflowers this year on my bell 
balcony because they should enchant um, my surrounding. I got those sunflowers and um, we did the photos in my studio garden and only the background a photo of a ocean scene and the fireflies were photoshopped. What I also did was to work a lot on the colors of the composition. So I wanted to have it a bit faded, the colors a bit muted so that everything has a very kind of vintage old look and I think I succeeded in that but I think that in the end when I was finished with the painting and I compared it with Waterhouse's paintings I was like ah, I just really didn't succeed very well so maybe really only 10% or, or whatnot um, because like one thing besides of some other things that I noticed was that his skin tones are very dark and modern photography and just the reference photos I use for my art most of the time skin tones are very light almost white and this really takes away a lot of the atmosphere a lot of the lively look of skin so I think for my next paintings when I do my own photos I will try to paint a bit darker skin tones and a bit more saturated so his muses always have very rose or very beige dark skin and it looks one would think it is white but it isn't so this was one thing that I realized um, I will have a link <laughs> to Google to Waterhouse for you to look him up if you don't know him yet I think when you are a young artist you might not have known of him I mean everyone just begins their art career and you can't expect that everyone knows like this artist so you should definitely look him up I think I have <laughs> um, saved so many pictures of him in my inspiration folder also from Sargent obviously and a lot of contemporary artists as well and yeah for the creation process of the painting after I finished the mock-up I projected the picture um, onto my canvas because this composition was so complicated that I didn't want to do the underdrawing freehanded I only do this when I have a more or less easy composition or I have time <laughs> what I don't most of the time don't have or when I just feel like it so making a freehand drawing is way more fun it's it really is but the other way if you traced it or use a projector it's definitely more accurate and you can avoid some mistakes but you still have to compare with your reference photo this is very important and I started with the hair because I deemed it the most difficult thing on the painting which it was so I'm not really a specialist in painting hair and I definitely need to work on that since I'm painting on canvas my technique differs as if I would paint it on wood on wood I believe it is a bit easier to paint hair because when you have a sanded surface you can make very very thin lines and hair strands very easily on canvas it's a bit difficult in my opinion because the canvas automatically smooths your brush strokes so if you want to have sharp hair strings you have to wait until the underlying oil paint is dried and then you can add more sharp lines like hair strings and yes I just waited and I think I needed three layers for the hair but I'm I'm happy how it turned out so it definitely worked I might maybe when I paint the next hair <laughs> I might be a bit better because I put so much effort in this one my advice for you if you are struggling with hair um, paint the darkest areas and then let it dry so I did a bit of a mistake because I did the darkest areas and then I already painted the white hair strands or the mid-tones into those areas but I realized that when you paint such a small area so if you paint a larger area then it it will definitely work but if you paint such a small area so the face is very small and if you paint so small then the odds are high that you smudge everything <laughs> so this is what happened and at the end I, I had to wait until my first layer was a bit dried and then I had to smooth 
smooth. The whole area was a dry brush so that I don't have those ugly smudged oil painting edges that I hate so much. Um, so to avoid this the next time I will only paint the dark areas, wait, let it dry and then paint the midtones and the whites into it because then I have more control and then I can paint those hair strings better. Surprisingly easy was the background. So I thought the background would be super super difficult because I very rarely only paint landscapes. So I concentrated a lot and this helped me. So if you have something that you don't know how to paint, um, look at it, <laughs> stare at it and think how you can paint it. And with such large areas like the background I try to use larger brushes and try to mix as much of my color as possible. So the sky, for example, has the same color all over the area. And earlier, when I was not as experienced, I would just mix a bit of the color. Then when it was empty, I would mix the next bit of the color and then I would end it up in a very uneven area and the sky just would look different in every little spot and this is ugly so <laughs> if you have a large area and the area has almost the same color take a big brush mix this color and fill this area and this is what I did with the background so in the first layer I didn't expect that I would be able to paint the small details like the waves or um, the birds so I just laid down the large areas and yeah waited until it's dry and I also what I what I really wanted to preserve with this painting is the the beautiful bronze golden under painting. Earlier this year and last year I did a series of those paintings where I started on a silver or golden under painting and then I kind of didn't <laughs> do it anymore. I didn't I don't know why because probably because I wanted to save time or something like that but I really missed that you can see this beautiful golden or silver under paint through the final painting so I forced myself to under paint my uh, canvases again and the thing is that you can't just start so you have to underpaint it then you have to wait for two days until it's dried and only then you can start also my newest painting I did on silver underpainting and I love how the silver comes through the painting yeah so with this painting I really try to push my borders and get better and I also put a lot of detail into the foliage in the background and I could really get lost in these details when I don't sometimes I wish I could just paint one month only on foliage because making one leaf and then the next leaf and then another leaf and another whatever plant part it's so relaxing and makes me so happy um, but I'm a bit sad that I have to manage my time and uh, I hope that in future I can maybe just don't do any gallery shows anymore <laughs> and only paint maybe one painting with a ton of foliage and a lot of details because I, I think this is important. I think it is important to make beautiful and elaborate paintings instead of small and fast paintings only to pay your bills and this is how I make a living as an artist as well. So I don't work one month on a painting. On this painting I did work a month because it was a commission and this was wonderful. So this commission enabled me to to spend so much time on a painting and this is why I'm so so thankful for this dear collector of mine that she enabled me to do this but otherwise when I would work a month or even two or more on one painting then I would have no guarantee that it would sell or if prints of it would sell so this is why I make so many small paintings but when I started out as an artist I did those large paintings and I missed these days so I hope maybe in future I can make more of those elaborate paintings paintings and hopefully um, this would, would work out. So I'm not sure how I will do this but maybe I I uh, suddenly get an idea. You never know. Yeah I hope you liked this video and it showed you a bit of the process behind a more elaborate painting and how to kind of tackle the individual parts and if you liked it don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already subscribe to my channel and I hope I see you in the next video. Bye bye!